Welcome to a video on solving quadratic equations with square roots. Recall that quadratic equations are polynomial equations that have an x squared term. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have any higher order and there's no cubed or fourth power. Let's take a look at some examples to get started. So let's start with this equation. We're going to solve x squared is equal to four. Now that's probably something you can often think about right in your head. It's just basically asking what number times itself is four. And the one that may come to mind right away is two. Certainly two squared is four. But when you think about it for some time, you realize perhaps that a negative times a negative is also a positive. So negative two squared is also four. And that means there are two solutions to this equation. And there's often two solutions to a quadratic equation. The solutions, and we're going to use curly brackets, all right, is either two or negative two. Now, in that particular equation, I did not use a square root, but I will demonstrate that in future problems. Let's take a look at the second example. Um, let's solve the equation x squared minus 53 is equal to 11. As you can see, and uh, from uh, maybe some prior equation experience, when we have uh, constant value on both sides. We can simplify this by adding or subtracting the same value to both sides. So I will begin by adding 53 to both sides of this equation. And that will cancel out on the left-hand side, leaving us with x squared is equal to, well, uh, 11 plus 53, which is 64. So the square root method is the idea of solving for a value of a square is we're going to take the square root of both sides of an equation. That's our inverse operation. So I'm going to take the square root of the left and the square root of the right-hand side. Now, when I do that on the left-hand side, the squaring and square root being inverse functions will cancel each other out. We'll just be left with X, which is what we're trying to solve for. On the right-hand side, the square root of 64, you can know that in your head or perhaps use a calculator, is 8. The thing to remember is kind of the phenomenon we discovered from this first problem is that either a positive or a negative value will work. So we're going to put plus minus anytime we take that square root. And you can write your solution like that. Or if you'd like to write it as a solution set, you can put in curly brackets, eight comma negative eight, both solutions. Let's take a look at an example where in, in, it's uh, the same method, but in a different format. What if we had a binomial, in this case, x minus five, and that binomial was squared, set equal to some value. I'm just going to use a value of nine. We can still apply this same technique, this square root technique that we applied on uh, the previous problem. Um, the way that it'll work, since we have already a perfect square, we're just going to take the square root as our first step. Taking the square root of the left-hand side, the square and square root cancel out. We're just left with the contents inside the parentheses, that being x plus x minus five. On the right-hand side, we're going to uh, perform the operation. The square root of nine is three. But again, we don't want to forget that phenomenon. It could either be positive or negative three. I'm going to write it as plus minus three. This time, we're not completely done with this equation solving. We're just trying to get x by itself. We need to add five to both sides of this equation. Now, this may be new to you. So what you want to be careful with is the way that you think about that right-hand side, OK? We're not just going to add five plus three, we're actually going to have that positive five, but we're going to either add or subtract three. That's what the plus or minus means. So you get two solutions. You get X is equal to five plus three. That will of course give us eight. And the other solution is X is equal to five minus three, and that will give us two. So our two solutions in this problem are either eight or two. And maybe you can see from this problem that we don't always just get a plus or minus version of the same number. It can actually be two different numbers. Still, we're getting those same two, or we're still getting two solutions. All right, so what, what else could happen? Here's a, two more examples. The, the next one is quantity x plus two squared equals negative 11. All right, so if we are solving this, I'm gonna solve this with the square root technique. We're gonna take the square root of both sides the square root of the left side, the square and square root cancel out. We're just left with x plus two. The right-hand side, we're still going to get that plus minus phenomenon, but notice that now we have a negative square root. You may recall from a previous lesson that anytime we have a negative square root, we can think of it that as the square root of 11 times the square root of negative one, which we write as square root 11 i. 
Now, if you evaluate square root 11 on your calculator, you're going to get some decimal places. We're going to try to avoid that here and just come up with an exact solution. All right, next step or last step in this problem is to subtract two from both sides. And so the way that we write that, notice that negative two is not the same type of term as square root 11i. We don't want to combine those terms. We will write the real number first. We'll write the negative two first. Then we will write plus or minus the square root of 11i. That is a great way to write your answer, but just know that it's really two solutions, right? The first, and they're both non-real. The first one is negative two plus square root 11i. It's the first solution. And the second solution is negative two minus square root 11i. All right, one last example. And I think we'll have this technique pretty much looked at. Let's take a look at our last example. We're going to solve the equation x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 2. Uh, in this case, it looks very different. We do not have a perfect square on the left-hand side because we have these other terms involved. We have a 6x and we have a 9. Those are not perfect squares. And the other issue, of course, is that we have individual terms. We have these plus signs. So what you would need to do in this case is to factor first, all right? This one works out pretty nicely. It will factor to be x times x gives me x squared. And then in this case, we're trying to get a nine, three times three will give me nine and both signs being positive works out. So this is a special case. We're gonna look at non-special cases in the next video, but in this case, notice that we have the same factor twice, x plus three times x plus three. We will write that as x plus three squared. And now we have our perfect square. We have our square, so we can use the square root method, and that is take the square root of both sides, right? On the left-hand side, the square and square root cancel out. We're just left with x plus 3. The right-hand side, don't forget our plus-minus phenomenon. Square root of 2 is not a whole number, so I'll just leave it as the square root of 2. The last step is to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. Once again, we do not have a like term. Um, the 3, the, excuse me, the negative 3, is different than a radical. So we're gonna put negative three first, plus or minus square root two. Um, if you are writing this as a list, don't forget that's two different solutions. That is negative three plus the square root of two. And you can also do negative three minus the square root of two. If you were, that is, that is the exact answer. If you were asked to approximate these solutions with a decimal, you would grab a calculator and you would figure out these individual values. What is negative three? plus square root two, and you would round that to some value, and negative three minus square root two, and those values would go in the brackets. Let me pause to calculate those values really quickly. Let's see. And here you can see the decimal approximations I received by using my scientific calculator. That's an approximate value. Well, I hope this video has helped you learn more about how to solve quadratic equations using the square root method.